Greetings, friends. Uh, it's me, Wayman. And I just come on to do another quick video um, discussing atheism, morality, and such. Because a lot of times the accusation is thrown at atheism that they have no, no uh, moral code and no morality. Therefore, they can be wretches, do anything they want, and not be held accountable. But atheism has the same access to virtue as believers. And believers will try to sell you something, friends. They, they try to create a need. Then they try to sell you something. And it's a false need. Because every person, religious or not, has the same kind of access to virtue itself. And reading back and reclaiming some of these ideas out of the Christian literature that's used quite a bit in sermons, we can see that justification through faith is a form of welfare or spiritual welfare system that was set up by theology basically to let people off scot-free and to sit around virtue's house and do nothing thinking by just making some sort of confession to virtue say asking Jesus in your heart or confessing that Christ was raised from the dead gives them access to the eternal life and the heavenly realms but as we see in many times over in Christ's own words this is not the case and we see that the field is opened up and can be interpreted so that everyone who practice the highest form of good and virtue is righteous and can get in and it is in fact a job requirement rather than a free gift. You can accept virtue, justice, and the highest good, or you can be a wretch and reject it. So here is Matthew 25 for the atheist. And, th and this is beautiful because you will see that the virtuous and the righteous in this are surprised and we'll get to that part. But here in Matthew 25, 34, there's the parable of the sheep. We're all familiar with it. But what's interesting here is, as an atheist and agnostics and, and unbelievers, we can see that this is virtue returning, justice returning to create the idea of a just state. So this is applying Plato to Matthew 25. And, and you'll see what I'm getting at. Then the king shall say to them on his right hand. This is after he uh, sets the sheep on the right hand with the goats on the left. Verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's, that's, that's virtue, friends. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat, so now we have to do something. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then the righteous shall answer him. This is, this is where they sound kind of surprised. Lord, when did we see you hunger and fed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? Or saw you sick or in prison and came unto you. And the king answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. This is beautiful, friends, because here we have to do something, and these people were doing acts of virtue, maybe as a reflex, and they were surprised by the reward. Because 
it wasn't out of a selfish desire of heaven that they were doing virtuous acts. Here, it would seem that they were surprised because they were doing virtue as a reflex, and they are doing something. Romans 10, 9, and 10 is not quoted in here when they get into the kingdom, saying, O oh, king, I see that you have raised, I believe that you were raised from the dead and just sat around your house of virtue and did absolutely nothing, but through belief I got in. Uh, that's not what this text is saying. So, let's look at what the goats, you know, unbelievers, people like you and me, friends, we're always called goats, you know. But I think it's turned around here. The goats are those who knew to do good, but did not do it. And he shall say to them, on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I hungered, and you gave me no meat, and I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in naked, and you clothed me not, in prison, and you visited me not. And they shall answer him, saying, Lord, when we saw, when was it that we saw ye a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick in prison, did not minister unto you? Then he answered them, saying, Verily, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. So that's virtue talking, friends. And virtue will, will definitely hold all these wretches accountable one day. And justice, uh, hopefully, uh, will come swiftly by any means. And nature has a way of doing that. And fate has a way of doing that. And the field is open, friend, to look to the higher good. And there's nothing more than we can do in this life than to look to the higher good, strive to obtain the highest forms of virtue, and encourage others to do so. We are not locked out. So be well, friends. And remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.